Hello friends, welcome to US Academy. This is me, Dr. Bilal Ahmed Butt, silver medalist in Junior National Olympia Mathematics, qualified JKC ET AIEEE 24th state rank, qualified for UPSC mains 2015, and well, I'm a working professional. In this lecture, we'll study internal structure of Earth. First of all, shape of Earth. It is geoid, not a sphere elliptical or egg-shaped. Geoid means this word has come from earth itself. Geo means earth. That means it has the shape of earth. So it has a unique shape. Radius of earth, it is 6371 kilometers. However, equatorial radius is more than polar radius. It is because of flattening of earth at poles. The flattening is due to rotation of earth with respect to the polar axis. Temperature temperature increases with depth at the rate of 10 1 degree centigrade per 32 meter in the upper layer of crust only and then increases with reduced gradient up to the center of earth. You will see in this graph how temperature varies. It varies at a uniform rate in the crust and then it de keeps decreasing, the rate keeps decreasing and finally you, you can see that it becomes flattened when it will reach to the core. Okay, and pressure also increases from crust when, when we meet deep, deep inside the earth, that is towards the core. So here, if this is earth, this is the center of earth, the temperature increases when we move from crust towards the core, pressure also increases. That is, temperature increases as well as pressure increases from crust to the core. Okay, so how do we know the internal structure of Earth? We come to know about the structure of Earth through the study of meteorites, through the study of volcanoes, drilling, seismic waves or earthquake waves. Okay, so through the study of meteorites, how? We studied meteorites in previous lecture. In that lecture, we studied that when meteors reach to the surface of Earth, they are known as meteorites. However, most of the meteors are burnt in atmosphere itself and never reaches to the surface of Earth. However, the remains of few bigger meteors reach to the surface. Only the core of these meteors reach to surface and the surrounding external layers are burned off in atmosphere itself. The property of the meteorites are dense and heavy. The earthquake waves predict this similar property of the core of Earth. Hence, these meteorites are the core of celestial objects. That is what we can presume that these must be the core of these celestial objects. Number second, study of volcanoes. The lava coming out from mantle is relatively denser, heavy and hot. So we can conclude that temperature and density increases from surface to the core from this study, from the study of volcanoes. Number third, drilling. It is not possible to drill much deeper. However, it is seen temperature increases with depth. Number fourth, seismic waves. These have their origin from lithosphere. The locked up energy is released in form of earthquake waves. So what are the different types of earthquake waves? These are primary waves or longitudinal waves. The direction of vibration of particles is same as that of direction of propagation of flow of energy. Travels both in solids, liquids and gases. Secondary waves are transverse waves. Direction of vibration of particle is perpendicular to the direction of propagation or flow of energy. Travels in both travels in solids only sorry faster than secondary waves primary and secondary waves are used to determine the internal structure of earth surface waves these are uh, most destruction causing waves before we study how these earthquakes are used for determining the internal structure of earth let me show you that if a wave passes from rarer to denser medium or denser to rarer medium it undergoes diffraction and for example this is a rarer medium and this is a denser medium when it moves from rarer to denser what will happen it will bend towards the normal this is the normal course but it will bend like this it will bend towards the normal and if the case is from denser to rarer like for example it will move from here to here 
what will happen the course is there but it will move it will move away from the normal since normal is this normal is this and it will move like this similarly the same phenomena is is being seen in these earthquake waves when they travel inside the earth so they undergo diffraction towards the normal when moving from surface to core fine because it is denser inside the core Snell's law says when waves move from clear to denser medium they undergo diffraction towards the normal this is Snell's law please remember at some depths diffraction is abrupt that means there is certain change in density these are called discontinuities I am talking of earth inside the earth and there are four main discontinuities what are those those are Conrad, Mohorovic, Gutenberg and Lehman this Conrad discontinuity this is between Sial and Sima Sial is used for continental crust continental crust and Sima is used for oceanic crust that means this discontinuity is between uh, oceanic crust and continental crust Mohorovic it is between crust and outer mantle when we study the internal structure of earth then we'll come to know below the crust there is mantle and outer mantle and crust there is Mohorovic Gutenberg this inner mantle and outer core and Lehman it is outer core and inner core please remember these discontinuities now we'll study how these earthquake waves are used in studying the internal structure of earth how it is used like for example these primary waves and secondary waves when they travel from the focal point focal point deeper inside the earth and what happens they diffract that means they deviates from their normal course and you can see it from this they are not traveling in straight line like this but they are diffracting from this way and when they are moving from rear to denser because they are moving towards the core that means they are uh, they will diffract towards normal that means they will diffract this way you are you can observe it here first of all they are diffracting this way and when they will move from denser to rear and then they will move away from the normal and you will see the course is changing that means the diffraction path is changing again and again and finally what will happen since we know the primary wave that travels through all the mediums both in solid and liquid and since this crust crust and mantle crust and mantle this is crust and mantle this is solid crust is solid and mantle is plastic that means that is not liquid but it is plastic in shape and this outer core this outer core is liquid and inner core is solid so the secondary waves will not be able to pass through this liquid that is the li liquid outer core so what will happen they will just pass through here and the primary wave when they will reach to this point here the diagram has not been shown clearly I'll say like this if this is the point so what will happen this will diffract first it will diffract inside it will move towards the normal and finally it will reach here and finally it will go this way that means this to this point it will be 105 to 140 degree and in this there, there will be no waves will penetrate in this zone that means this will be earthquake shadow zone for both the waves both the primary and secondary waves this is and this zone this zone is this zone completely whole of this zone that is 105 to 105 this zone will be shadow zone for secondary waves or transverse waves and this zone is shadow zone for both of these waves okay 105 to 140 it is a shadow zone for primary wave and 100 to 5, 105 this is shadow zone for secondary waves and why earthquakes will not occur if this is the focal point it will not occur at 105 105 and 140 degree centigrade on both the sides or not on east and west now from the studies of these earthquake waves we have found the discontinuities and I will let you know the discontinuities in this fig exactly now I will show it to you at here the layers and the thicknesses yeah, we come to this conclusion through the study of earthquake waves the crust is 8 to 40 kilometers and outer outer core mantle if we include it then it will be total in total it will be 100 kilometer in thickness crust it is 8 kilometer in thickness at oceans and 40 kilometer and continents up to 40 kilometers at continents so it is 8 to 40 kilometers and in total out crust and outer mantle it will be 100 in in uh, together crust and outer outer mantle acts as a single unit and it is known as lithosphere because it is solid in shape outer outer mantle is solid asthenosphere it is also a part of mantle it's 300 kilometer in thickness inner outer mantle it is 250 to 300 kilometer you can see it here 
inner inner mantle to 185 km outer core 2270 inner core 1216 and total depth it will be 6371 km here i told you outer core is liquid and this is solid okay and these are in plastic they are plastic okay and the crust is solid okay temperature increases as we move down temperature increases pressure increases and finally the temperature in this will be around 5500 degrees centigrade to 6000 degrees centigrade but this is solid this is liquid now the question is if the temperature is more why this is solid and this is liquid it is because of the because the pressure also increases the state the state of matter is depends upon temperature and pressure here the pressure is enormous it is because of that pressure it it is it is in solid state hope you enjoyed watching our video please subscribe for more videos and please don't forget to like and share